Hi, welcome to All Brands After Hours with me, Courtney Dowlett, the show where we hang out and craft together. Today, we'll be lighting things on fire. I will be showing you how to burn wood with your skin cut. Let's do it. Now you heard me right, we are going to be burning wood with our brother scanning cut. I have this really cool tray right here, it's very large because of course I always pick the biggest one. And I thought it'd be neat to put something on there that's Eastery, because we are right around Easter, but not totally saying Happy Easter. So I thought it'd be great to put maybe a bunny on there. So of course what did I do? I go online, I type in a uh, bunny. Uh, I think I typed in floral bunny and this image came up. How cute would this be burned onto our tray? But whenever I printed it out, it didn't have all of these. It had a few, but it didn't have enough. I wanted it to look like he's in the forest, in the woods, just frolicking. So I actually took a Sharpie, just a plain old sh black Sharpie. And I went and I colored in a few more bits on there. I don't know if you can see them too great. And I just kind of free handed a few extra pieces of grass, uh, extra little, you know, floral bits up there and different things like that. So then that way I really could make it a custom item for me. Now think if I did this just with a Sharpie, I mean, you could give this to your kids or your grandkids and they could draw little Easter pictures and then scan it in the machine and cut it out and burn it onto the wood. I'm actually doing that for a present. So if mom, if you're watching, no, you're not. So, <laughs> but that's something easy. And I just kind of free handed. I mean, I'm not an artist by any means, but I just free handed a few extra pieces of grass and stuff like that. And now I've got this cute little custom made um, picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to scan this into the machine and we're going to cut it out of vinyl. But when we're weeding, we're going to leave behind all the outside parts and take away the inside parts. I know that's confusing, it is, but we'll go through each part of it. And then we're gonna take what's called a torch pin. So I think this one's a Scorch Marker Pro. Um, and we're gonna take that and we're going to color it in and then take a heat gun and light it up. I know, I know, it sounds like a lot. And everyone's like, Courtney, where do you get these crazy ideas? Usually I'm just sitting there and like, what else could I do? Or you see a picture of something and you're like, I could do that. I could try. What's the point of trying? Trying. All right, so we've got our image. Nothing, again, nothing special about it. I printed it off of regular computer paper. And then I added a few of my own little embellishments. Does it have to be black and white? No, it does not. This one happened to be black and white because I was thinking more of like a silhouette of the bunny, but it could have been in color. The skin and cut can, definitely see color so this one just happened to be black and white which worked in my benefit because i wanted to add to it remember so this is actually works great but it does not have to be black and white i get that question all the time it does not have to be in black and white now you should go and grab your scanning mat it's the it's just black and it has a little slip over it um i don't know where i left mine i have no idea what i did with my scanning mat i will find it later probably in the most random of spots so I'm gonna use my low tack mat today. Um, Courtney, why are you using your low tack mat? Well, because this is paper. The, our picture is paper and I don't wanna stick that to my standard purple mat or my gold fabric mat because I'm gonna be picking off paper for quite a while. So if I'm gonna scan in with anything with the paper, then I'm gonna use my blue one if I don't, if I can't find my scanning mat. You should use your scanning mat. Use your scanning mat. It gives a better scan, but I don't know where mine is. So we're gonna make do. All right, so we just put our image on there, on the sticky mat, nothing special. Again, this is our blue low tack. If you don't have a scanning mat, okay. And now I'm actually gonna take my brayer and I'm gonna brayer it down because this mat is very much not sticky right now because I need to clean it. All right, so let's go ahead and go over to our machine. And I push this button right here to load my mat. Now that my mat is loaded, I'm going to come here to scan. Now it gives me different options. Do I want to direct, uh, direct cut, scan to cut data, scan to USB, or if I click over, scan to Canvas. Remember, Canvas is the free software that Brother gives you. Do they do not have to pay for it? It comes with your machine. So I, in this case, want to scan to cut data. Why would I not want to scan 
to direct cut. Well, direct cut is if I had some fabric and say it had bunnies on it and I want to cut out those bunnies off of that fabric. Well, then I would direct cut because I'm telling it, hey, I want you to scan this in and cut out actually out of the thing that I'm scanning in, which I don't want to do that. I don't want to cut my paper that I'm scanning in. So I want to scan data. So scan this in and save it to my data. I could scan to USB or to Canvas. So if I wanted to edit it even further, I could scan it to my USB, bring it over to whatever editing software I wanted, edit it for, for more, or I could send it to Brother Canvas and edit it from there. So it gives you all the different options, but I want to scan to cut data. Hit start. And start again, Courtney, what does this mean when it's talking about a lever? If you have an SDX model, there will be a lever on the side. That lever means uh, it's going to pull up a bar internally so you can do thicker materials. But this is just regular paper, so there's nothing I need to do with that. So I'm going to hit start. She's scanning it in. She's brought it in. Oh, she's coming back. Don't talk about her. She's back. No, I'm just kidding. All right. And we're done with that paper now. She's been scanned into the machine. Isn't that wild? So now it's recognizing it's turning that scan into a cut file. So now it's scanned it into our machine. We see our image right there. Now we have a few different options of what we can do. We can tell it, hey, I just want the outer parts of this. So only the outer parts. Well, I don't want that. I want the inner parts too, because in between my, my uh, grass bits and stuff like that, I want that. So now I could select the inner and the outer. Or I could tell it, hey, I want this. I want you to make it more like a draw line. So just one line, no innards or outards or anything like that. So say my grass pieces, they're now just a line. There's no um, sides to it. It's just one straight line. Well, for drawing, that's fine. But for what I'm wanting to do, that's not fine. So I want the innards and the outards. There she is. Now what we're going to do is we are going to scroll in. So we are going to come right here to where we see these little arrows. And we're going to click them and drag. Courtney, why are we doing that? Well, if you notice, the sides of my paper are showing, all that bits that were on my mat were showing. Well, I don't want any of that. I just want my image. So again, I'm gonna click, drag, and drop it to where I want. So that way I'm telling it, hey, just this area, that's what I want. So that way I don't have to take time to delete out all the other bits that it saw. It's such a good scan, it's catching everything. But I just want my image. So now that we've dragged and dropped it right there, we're going to hit preview down here. And what she's doing, she's just previewing what it's going to be. Well, I like that. I think it looks nice. So I'm going to hit OK at the bottom. Now, where do you want to save? Do we want to save to a USB? Do we want to save to our scan and cut? Do we want to save it wirelessly to Canvas? Well, in this case, I want to save it to my machine. Okay, so it's telling, hey, this is what it was saved as. You cannot tell it what you want the name to be saved as. I wish you could, but in this case, we can't. So we're going to hit OK. Now, why does it bring us back to the screen? Courtney, I thought we were done with the screen. We are, but it's just giving you the options. If you wanted to edit it further, you could right now, which I think it looks great. So I'm going to come right here and I'm going to hit the home button. Okay, it's saying, hey, I'm going to delete this pattern. That's fine. We already have it saved to our machine, the one that we wanted. So we're going to hit OK. All right, so we're going to come right here to the bottom. Retrieve data. Where do we want to retrieve from? Our machine, USB, um, Canvas? No, I want to come from my machine. All right, now there's tons of different things on here. These are all things that I have saved into the machine. But a little trick is if you come here and select this right here, with the little double arrows, it will send you all the way down to the bottom. Well, we know that the thing that we just saved in our machine is going to be the last thing that we put in there. So we know that this last one right here is the image that we just saved. All right, and there she is, gorgeous as ever. So we, they were happy with this. We like this. So we're going to come here and hit OK. That way she'll place it on our mat for us. Now, this is itty bitty. <laughs> I want it to be bigger on my... Um, on my board. Well, I'm not going to touch anything right now. I'm not going to move anything because if you notice, I accidentally clicked right there. Oh, I'm sorry, right there with the little red box. Well, all of these pieces are individual little pieces right now. 
which means if I move any of them, I'm gonna mess up my image. So before I move anything or edit anything, I'm gonna come right here to edit. And then I'm gonna come to these three boxes right at the top. Those are your selector boxes. What that's going to do is let you select multiple items. So you saw where I click and it's just the one red box. Well, I want to select all of it. I want a bunch of red boxes. So I'm gonna come here to the selector tool and I have two different ways I could do it. I can select this one right here with the little circle and the um, triangle and it's gonna select every single thing that's on my mat. So say I didn't wanna select everything on my mat. Well, let's unselect this and then I could come here to where the arrow is and then that way I could only select the things that I want. So I could zoom in and only select a few items. Now, if you notice right now, it's telling me the arrow down. I have my scan and cut set to a 12 by 24 right now because I know I'm gonna use a 12 by 24 mat. Um, so right now, that's why she's giving me the arrow down. So, okay, let's go back and I wanna select everything. We're gonna select it all and hit okay. Now we're going to go to object edit. Object edit goes into more of the editing screen, but if you notice, a lot of them are grayed out because you can't resize every little piece at once unless they're grouped together. You can't add more of all of these items unless they're grouped together. So right now they're all individual pieces, but I want to group them all together. So I would select this right here, the circle with the triangle, and that's now making it all one piece. And if you notice, all my editing things are back because I can now, it's one item, so I can now resize them and add multiples and rotate them and do all that fun stuff. So now if I was to click it and move it around, she's one solid piece, which is what I want. I don't want a bunch of little pieces all over the place. So now what we can do is we can resize her, you know, do all that fun stuff. But I want to rotate her. Why do I wanna rotate her? Well, because I know that this long image is not gonna fit on my 12 by 12. I want it to go past that 12 by 12 because my board is a lot bigger than a 12 by 12. So I'm gonna come here to this box with the little arrow that's above it, and I'm gonna select that because that is my rotator tool. Okay, now we have a few different options. We can rotate 90 degrees, 10 degrees, or one degree at a time. And why is that important? Well, because sometimes I want to fit little things in there. Say I wanted to add uh, a flower right here by the bunny's head. Well, I could put it in there, but oh, well, I wish the petal was dipping down by his nose. Well, I could rotate it, and then that way the petal is pointing towards his nose. And I could do it 1% at a time, so I can get really, 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 really detailed if I want to. So in this case, I want to just do a full 90% because I want him going this way instead because we're going to be doing that 12 by 20 format. So now if I hit OK and go to the resizer tool, remember, which is the box right here with the arrow going this way, I can now hit the plus sign right here and make him bigger. And there he goes. Now, we don't know exactly how big we want to edit this to. So now we need to figure out, well, how big do we want it on here? Well, I think it would be cool to have the bunny at the top, or this whole area, and maybe put a name at the bottom, or it would be cool to maybe if the bunny sits on the bottom and I could add a name or add something up here. So, hmm, let's do that. Let's put the bunny at the bottom, I saw some fluff. Let's put the bunny at the bottom, and then that way this is all open like the sky. I like that. See, we're getting creative, people. So I have my little All Brands tape measure here. So let's see. The inside of my board, not counting this part, is mm, about a 17, no, about an 18 going length. I'm sorry, width, but going height, it is about a 10 and a half. So I know that my width can be about an 18, my height needs to be under a 10 and a half, which we're resizing this all together. Your skin cut's gonna wanna resize like breathing. So all together at once, all together at no way. You can tell it to, hey, lock one of those and only go width instead of height. Um, it's an option, but for this case, I don't wanna distort it, so I want it to do it like breathing, so it's all together. Okay, so now that we know our, our height and our width, 
we know that technically now that we've rotated it, our width is our height. So we know that um, 18 inches, we need to stay under 18 inches. So I'm going all the way up. I know I have 17 and a half to work with. So I'm gonna get pretty close to that. Oh, and then I almost went right on. All right, so I'm gonna give myself a little bit of wiggle room and do 17.4. We know that our, our width, which is starting to go our height because we've rotated, is 9.9, .9, which is fine because we had a 10 and a half to work with. So we are A-OK -okay on that front. So this works great. Let's hit OK. And if we wanted to edit any further, now would be the time or forever hold your piece. I think it looks great. So let's go ahead and select down here, OK. And OK again. And OK again because we don't want to edit anything else. So now we get to this screen right here, Police Select. Well, what do we want to do? Do we want to cut? Do we want to draw? Do we want to emboss? Do we want to foil? Do we want to do even more things? If you scroll down, well, we know for this instant we want to cut. So we're going to select cut. Okay, now something very important with vinyl is half cut if you have an SDX model. What is half cut? Half cut is when you tell the machine to only cut through half of the material. It can sense when that first piece uh, ends and the next one starts. If you've watched any of our video with vinyl, you know vinyl is two parts. You've got your vinyl bit, and then if it's a pressure sensitive vinyl, uh, PSV, it's going to have a paper backing. Well, why does it have a paper backing? Why is it like that? Well, this paper backing is what's holding all the vinyl together. So if we were to cut out a name, say we cut out my son Alexander's name. Well, if I didn't have that paper backing, all the pieces would just kind of be cut through. And then when I wanted to put it on something, I would have to take each individual letter and make sure they were aligned, make sure that they were properly centered. That's just a nightmare. So that paper backing is gonna keep it all together. And then we'll take what you call transfer tape, put it over the top to transfer it onto whatever image, in this case, our board. So I'm gonna take my vinyl and I'm going to cut a piece of it off of my roll that I have here. This is Caesar Vinyl, S-I-S-E-R. It is probably, definitely my favorite pressure sensitive vinyl. So I'm gonna select the pink one. Does not have to be a certain color. The machine has no idea, the project has no idea. And since it's not staying on there, it doesn't really matter what color it is. So I made sure I cut out a piece that was the width of this because I knew my image is that width that I've just edited. Um, and I have four boys, so let me use pink when I want. <laughs> I don't ever get to use pink. All right, so we're gonna select this button right here, the same button that we loaded it in. We're gonna unload, and we're done with this. We're done with our image. We don't need it anymore. So we're gonna put it over there, and I'm actually going to clear this because we are bringing in the large, and in charge, she just keeps going, uh, 12 by 24 mat. So we just had our 12 by 12 mat, and now we get our 12 by 24 mat. Um, she's a little bit bigger, you know, just give or take, she's a little bit bigger. Uh, she is the 12 by 12 mat in width, but she's 12 by 24, so she's double going this way, which is awesome. So, I love that part. <laughs> so, I'm going to take my vinyl that I just cut out, and I'm going to take that paper backing, remember she has paper backing, and I'm going to put that paper backing to my mat. Now, what if you only had a 12 by 24 mat that was fabric mat or a standard mat? I still would not put paper on them. If it's a really old mat and it's not very sticky anymore, okay, maybe, but still, it makes me nervous. I don't want to ruin my mat. So, low tack, 12 by 24. It's like how you have your fabric scissors and then your regular scissors. These are your paper scissors. <laughs> so, we're gonna put that on there. I'm gonna grab my brayer tool. If you've watched any of our videos, you know how much I love my brayer. So, I'm going to bray that on there. Courtney, why do you bray? Because this isn't a very sticky mat because I don't want it to be very sticky because of my paper. But I wanna make sure that my, um, my vinyl's on there so it can cut out and not shift or have any mess ups in the machine. So this is just giving me that reassurance. You can take, of course, the back of your palm and go like this. This just gives a good seal, so I appreciate that. I always get questions about my brayer. Um, we link all the products in the description bar. If you ever have a question about what product I'm using, it's linked in the description. So, 
There we go. All right, she is large and in charge and on there. So we're going to take it in the same way that we did with our 12 by 20 format. We're gonna load it into the machine. So we take our mount. She's so big, she's out of frame, look. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're gonna line her up right here. Hit this button right here, the same one we loaded with. Alrighty, so our mat is loaded in, but Courtney, you didn't select a, uh, a blade. I know. So if you have the vinyl kit, which I'll put a picture of it on the screen. If you have the vinyl kit, you will have this blue blade right here. So that would be the one that you used because this one was specially made to cut out vinyl. It's very good and very, very delicate and cuts out vinyl very well. So if you have that kit, this is when you would use that one. Now, if you don't have that kit, you would use your black auto blade. In my opinion, this gives a better cut, but if you're not doing a ton of vinyl, what is the point? So if you do a ton of vinyl, looking into that vinyl uh, kit is great, but if not, you can do it with the black auto blade. So of course, since I have this, I'm going to use this, but if you don't, this also works. We are going to take our blue vinyl blade and we're going to put it in the slots right here. I always have questions, hey Courtney, I feel some resistance right here when I put in my blade. I would check it. Um, you might have something in there from a previous project you were doing, you know, just get lodged in there, piece of vinyl, cardstock, whatever. So just take a look and make sure there's nothing lodged in there. Also check your blade, make sure nothing is lodged or funny in, in, in that. Um, and it should just slip right down and lock. Alrighty, so we have half cut off, which is not what we want, because remember vinyl's two parts. So we are gonna come right here to the wrench. We are gonna select that and we are gonna scroll down one and we are going to turn half cut on. So we're gonna hit okay. So half cut is now on, which is what we want for our vinyl. But if my next project is card stock or fabric, I'm gonna to have to make sure I turn that half cut back off because I wanna cut through those materials all the way. But since we're doing vinyl, half cut on. All right, now we should do a test cut. Do I ever do test cut? No, I trust my SDX uh, auto blade. So I'm gonna hit start. All right, so that's a very detailed image. So it's saying it's gonna take about 10 minutes. If I was assembly lining them and doing a lot, say for gifts, then I could be prepping the next one while that's going, different things like that. Now, a uh, quick thing about wood while she's cutting. This has been lightly sanded with a 220 grit sandpaper. Um, if you get a natural wood that doesn't have any sheen on it, you might be good to go, but it is nice just to give it a little bit of a sand, nothing crazy at all, just a little bit of sand to prep your material. If you notice that your wood has a sheen to it, it's probably been glazed or sealed with something, and the torch pin that we're gonna use isn't gonna be able to penetrate that very well. So a natural wood would be great. You can, you know, uh, you can stain your wood later on if you want. Um, and staining's fine, as long as that stain doesn't have like a, a polish to it of any kind. I mean, it should be fine, but I usually stain after I do my wood, just to make sure that that torch pin can really penetrate that wood and give me a nice, uh, a nice good uh, burn. It sounds so crazy when we're talking about scanning cut, but a burn. All right, I wasn't scrolling my phone and she's done. So we're gonna hit okay right here and then select that button on the side again to unload our mat. Oh my goodness. Now, you have a few different options here once we get to this point of it all. You can leave it on your mat and do it that way or you can take it off of your mat to weed it out. I personally like to leave it on my mat because that way it holds down because I store my large rolls in a roll. So if you notice right here, she's wanting to already pull up a little bit. So I like to weed it out while it's still on my mat. So I'm going to make a little room so I can put her sideways because that way I can reach her better. And I'm going to come get out my weeding tools. Weeding tools are awesome because this little thing looks like a uh, dentist tool and it can pick away at the vinyl that I don't want to kind of help me out. Now, since we're making a template or a stencil with this vinyl, we're going to be doing the opposite of what we normally do. What we normally do is pick away all the outer bits that we don't want. But in this case, we're gonna pick out the inner bits. So it's very, very weird for me, but we're going to do that. Now, I don't know if you can see this well on camera, and I'll try to get a, um, I'll try to video it freehand it, 
um, to kind of show you what we're going to weed out. So we're going to be weeding this inside part instead of these outside parts because this outside part is going to create a template and we just we don't want this there that's where we're going to be putting the torch pin uh, and coloring in like a coloring sheet so we are going to be weeding those out so you see our bunny right there we're going to be weeding him out so let's go ahead and start weeding we've got the bunny free so i'm going to keep weeding and probably watch a tv show <laughs> And I will be back to you when I'm done weeding this thing. All right, so I've weeded out everything that I did not want. So now we've got this. I know how cool is that? I think it came out cute. Okay, so we have that on here, but now we're going to take this. This is transfer tape. Transfer tape is what helps with pressure sensitive vinyl, your image to go to whatever you want to put it on. Um, if you're doing heat transfer vinyl, you don't need that because she kind of has a built-in little top clear layer. Um, so this is a new roll. So I'm going to put it like this. Now this, if it had just been a solid piece, I wouldn't need transfer tape. I could just put it on there. But all these little bits, I want to make sure that they're properly put on there and everything lays nicely. So just gonna quickly measure her on out like this. Lovely. Okay. And since we have it on here, I'm actually going to keep it on my mat. So again, it stays flat for me. Um, and transfer tape is two parts. So you have your paper part and then you have your clear part, just like your pressure sensitive vinyl. So I'm actually going to take part of it and get it like this, roll that paper down, come here and align it with my vinyl. That way, now whenever I unroll the rest of it, it just easily goes on to there. So just do it a little bit at a time, pull out a little bit and smooth her on down. And this would be the time if you see any bubbles, kind of work them out a bit. It's not a huge deal, but you know, you don't want a giant bubble in the middle of it. Okay. And we're gonna keep this paper backing because transfer tape is reusable. So as soon as I'm done with this, I'm putting it back on here. That's a large piece. I wanna keep using it. Alrighty. Now that we've done that, we can peel, there we go, peel our vinyl off of our mat. We are done with our mat. And I will find the clear sheet later to put that back on. Now, now that we have this, you have two different options. You could take a brayer tool or a scraper tool to smooth it down. I personally, when it's something like this, I want to do my scraper tool so I can make sure I'm like getting into all the little nooks and crannies of the vinyl. Okay, now I'm going to take it, I'm going to actually flip it over and I'm going to do that again. I want to make sure that all every little bit gets transferred over. Okay, so now when I flip it over, the vinyl should stay on there. I'm actually going to start from the Ah, look at that. Oh, that's so cool. So now my paper backing of my vinyl is coming off. And I personally like to do it with the sticky part down so there's not sticky stuff flying in the air. And we're going to go ahead and peel that off. That is so cool. Now I'm noticing a few little bits want to stick on that paper. So I'm just going to come make sure that those stay down on the transfer tape. But everything else is transferring over beautifully. All right, so got the paper backing off of there. Oh my goodness, it looks so cool. Okay, Courtney, calm down. It does look cool. All right, let's grab our tray. And very unceremoniously threw it on there. All right, so quick guide to it. We're going to put our vinyl on here and then our torch pen, and then torch pen. Is that an adjective? I'm not sure. All right, so we got our vinyl, and I'm just going to sit this on here as best I can, as lined up as I can by free hunting. Okay, I think I need to scoot over a little bit this way. Okay, there we go. Kind of adjusted it a bit, all that good stuff. All right, 
So I've just placed it in there, laid it in there nicely. We're going to take our scraper and we're going to start going over the image. Just how we did with our transfer tape, but this time we're going to do it so that vinyl stays on there. Okay, so now the fun part, now that that vinyl is on there, we are going to take our transfer tape right here. We're going to take our transfer tape right here and we are going to start pulling it away with, from there so that way the vinyl stays on. There it goes. Man, it was on there. Oh, all right. Just gonna throw that there. All right, so got the vinyl off of there. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come around, take my scraper and make sure all the pieces are laying down flat. So now we have our image on there. That's so cute. Honestly, the vinyl alone just would be cute. I'd just have to cut off the little side and she'd be adorable. But I want to burn this. Now, I did do a tester on this wood on the back. I just took the little scorch marker and I did a little star. I actually did a line. I don't know if you can see that very well. I did a line. Then I did a little star just to test to see if this wood was good and ready and I had sanded it in. Okay. So, now I'm going to take my torch pen. This particular pen that I have has a... Um, bullet tip and it has a little brush, little foam one that you can take out and do more like detailed work. Might use both, but for right now, I'm gonna start with the brush tip. Now for these, make sure you shake them up really well beforehand. Um, if it's brand new, you might wanna get a paper towel and kind of dab it a few times to make the ink start flowing. Now be very, very careful with this. Maybe wear gloves. I'm just gonna go for it. And we're trying, you know, not super thick we're just doing a light layer all over it oh that noise is gonna be interesting All right, I feel like I could be doing this all day, but I'm getting lightheaded. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, now that we have that, it's the fun moment. So I'm gonna put my torch pen away. If I feel like I need a little bit of uh, fine tuning once we take the vinyl off, I'll be able to see it better, but I think I got all the bits. It's pretty exciting. Okay, so we're gonna take our vinyl. I'll do it this way so you guys can see. Isn't that crazy? So now it's all pinky. So we're going to come and take our vinyl on the edge and we're going to start peeling her off. <laughs> this would be easier to do if it was down. <sighs> the first bit. Oh, that's so exciting. Okay. Oh, she is on that wood. <gasps> this is exciting. All right, I'm going to put her down because it's easier for me to do. Oh my God, this is so exciting. I'm just like, it's like ripping into a present, just kind of going crazy and going for it. Oh. Oh. I'm so excited. Okay, Courtney, focus. Alrighty. Now I gotta get all the little bits off of there. If you wanna use your picking tool for that, that would work too. Uh, let's see, I'm just trying to find, actually, I think it might be working, it might work, good. ah, there it is, my spatula tool, duh, Courtney, you just come underneath that and pull her on up. Now, I'm going to be careful about some of these bits, because I see where I went over the vinyl, um, and actually colored, I'm sorry, I went over the vinyl, actually colored the vinyl, and I don't really want to put my fingers on that torch, uh, pin, so, this is going to save me. This this is going to prevent me from having to do that. Um, actually, tweezers. <laughs> We're like in surgery now. Because I don't really want to put my fingers on that. Uh, I just don't feel like that's too safe to do. So, this is going to work great. Now, what can I say? I never colored within the lines. Whew. 
All right, little pieces are off. She is pink. Honestly, not a bad look. All right, okay, now comes the dangerous part. <laughs> it's whenever we realize we've gone too far is when I start incorporating power tools into things, okay? So what we're gonna do is, this is a heat gun. It has to get hot for that uh, torch pen to actually heat up to what we want and burn. So a hair dryer, anything like that, isn't gonna really work because it doesn't get hot enough. So that's where heat gun comes in. So I'm gonna flip the switch and then I'm gonna start lightly going over it, just back and forth. I don't wanna keep it in one spot because that's going to actually you know, create havoc. I'm just gonna evenly be going back and forth. Should I be doing this outside? Yes, should I at least crack a window? Also yes, but it's late. So, oh. if you're the owner of all brands, you didn't see this, sir. Okay, thank you. the rest of the outside because it does start smelling a bit so I recommend it outside I'll be back guys how good did it come out now there's a few spots that I want to go back over later uh like on this egg I feel like he's kind of got a line which I mean maybe it'll give it a little style but I feel like I should go over some of the areas that are a little bit more pinky um so good okay. so best method is just to kind of slowly go over it don't stay in somewhere too long because that's how I got these splotches I stayed in there a little bit too long but then I kind of liked it so teach their own whatever you prefer but how cool is that? Oh, I kind of want to do more of these. You know what we could do? Oh my goodness. I always do um, garden posts to say what's in my garden and I write everything down on there. We could burn some and then that way the weather won't even affect them because it's not like it's handwritten with a marker. It won't fade because it's burned. I have more projects to do tonight. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for joining me. Make sure you come back next week. Uh, we'll be having even one f more fun projects. And don't forget to like and subscribe so we know you guys want the more of these videos. Y'all have a good night. Bye.